Uh, we also need to check first that there's actually a value there. Because if, if there's no value there and they just press plus or minus, then we don't want it to do anything because there's nothing to add or subtract. So we're going to say if. And instead, we could also say equals equals empty, but um, in Python, uh, strings and lists and dictionaries work as uh, booleans. Um, an empty string will return false, a non-empty string will return true. Same thing for list, an empty list will return false, non-empty list true. Same thing for dictionaries and sets and other objects. So we can just say if self that value is basically saying if the string is not empty. So if the string is not empty, we want to store the operator and we want to store the value as previous value. And then that's when they would enter their next value and then complete it with the, by pressing equals. So we'll go ahead and do our case for the equals. So remember, since we're only using one block for the operator, and we're going to store the operator, over here we also don't need to check for each, we don't need to check if it's plus or minus or whatever. Um, we can actually use the eval function in Python. Uh, so we'll create a, a helper function over here. And again, uh, we'll preface it with the underscore because it's only going to be used internally in this class. And we'll say return evaluate. Evaluate takes a, a string and returns the, the result as if it was actual code. So we're going to want to evaluate the expression and it's going to be our previous value and then whatever the operator is. So for example, it was plus, and our previous value was 4, so we're going to say 4 plus, and then the current value of it was like 5, then we're going to evaluate 4 plus 5, and we're going to want to return 9, and that's what the eval is going to do. So since all of our variables, our instance variables are strings, we can just concatenate them. So we'll say evaluate self dot previous value plus self dot operator plus self dot value and that's going to create one string with all of those arguments that we want and over here so when they press equal we're going to say the value is now and that's actually the eval function is going to create uh, or return a a number or an integer or it could be a float as well it's not gonna return a, a string so since in all of our other cases we, we're looking for strings we're, we're gonna want to convert our the the result to a string so now this this will call the evaluate function which would return the result. So if it was 4 and then plus 5, it's going to return the number 9, but then we'll convert it back to a string, which will then be passed back to the controller to display in the view. So let's test that out. So we say 4. Plus five. Oh, and then see now we have the four and the five, which we would wanted to clear out the first four because now we have the four and the nine. So we need to go back to our model 
and whenever the user presses one of the operators and there's a value, like I said, we're going to store the operator and we're going to store the previous value. And after we store the, or we, we're going to store the value as previous value. And after we do that, we're going to clear the current value or what's currently being displayed. So well, let's test that out. So now when we say four plus, so that cleared that. Then we do five. And then we get to equals. Now we have the nine. So then we can now we can use that as our previous value and say plus one should give us ten. So I'll test it a little bit more, plus 5 should give us 15, we'll clear it out, we'll say 8 plus 9 should give us 17, and so we know that's working, the plus is working, now we can move on to the minus, or actually the minus should be working as well, 6 minus 1 should be 4, Right, because we only use one case for all of these four. So four minus two should be two. Right? And then we'll add five back in to make it seven. We'll say minus four should be three. So the plus and minus are working. Let's test out the multiplication. Five times 5 or I, I did 55 so 5 times 5 is 25 so that seems to be working Let's try a little bit more 4 times 3 should be 12 there's 12 so that seems to be working let's try the division so we'll try 9 divided by 3 and we get, well, we got 3, but we got 3.0. And that's because in Python, uh, single forward slash means uh, full division, so the whole number and the remainder. But in this case, since we only had the 9 and we had the 3 without a decimal, we wanted to return an integer um, answer. So we need to go back to our model and... We'll say here when the when they press an oper uh, one of the operators, we'll say it's it equals caption. Or actually, we'll say it equals the integer division, which is the double forward slash. If caption is equal to so if it's division, um, we want to change it to integer division. We actually, we only want to do that if both numbers are an integer. So, if if the previous value is an integer, like it was in our case, we had the nine, and. And the second number, which was in our case, we had the 3. We were trying to do 9 divided by 3. Should give us an integer number 3. But remember, we also got to check that they press division. So we'll start with that. So Because the logic was in Python work uh, like a short circuit, so if it first checks this, and the caption is division. But if it's something else, like if it's positive or 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 uh, addition or multiplication, then this is going to fail 